Okay. Hello. Hey, uh, well, my name's Wes Taylor, and uh, we're going to play around here with this little colt for a little while here and uh, give an introduction to science based horsemanship and just, you know, what does that mean? So, I'll, while I'm, I'm kind of hanging out and working with this horse, I'm going to be explaining to you what science based horsemanship means to me and kind of the background and, and uh, how I come about my knowledge and uh, kind of my mentors and share some of my life story with you while while we're working with this horse though so let's get this horse caught first so uh let me tell you a little bit about this horse while i'm getting him caught uh really i don't know very much about him at all there he is uh three year old and when i went and picked him up today i just posted on facebook that i needed a young horse that hadn't been worked with much uh you know to use as a demo horse and, and anyway so my neighbors called me about this one, uh, but you know they, they caught him, had him in a pen, they could catch him quite easily, and then they let him out. Uh, we, he'd never been in a trailer before, and so we took a little minute to get him in the trailer. But anyway, that's, that's about what I know about him, you know, and he seems pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nice guy, pretty quiet, and uh, you know, not real reactive, so we're just going to see what we can if we can get this halter on. Hey, bud. And then we'll go from there if we can get it, get the halter on. While we're, uh, waiting here, we'll get, well, give me a minute. I'm having a hard time thinking and talking here, so let's see if we can get him, get him caught. So the science that I'm going to be talking with you about is with uh, we're going to talk about how these horses' brains, how they work, uh, the chemicals that can go on in their brain. So there's a neurochemistry that really uh, kind of dictates what these horses, uh, you know, what's going on in their mind as far as kind of how reactive they are, how responsive. And so right now I don't have a whole lot of uh, attention from this guy. And that's kind of what the, the trouble is here, is I really just need to get his attention more with me and less on everything else. Let's see if we can kind of help him focus a little bit here. And I'm just going to keep asking for some attention. So I want to get to where I can get him to start kind of looking at me so I can start drawing his mind and, and start getting his mind on me rather than on everything else around here. He's only been here, you know, maybe an hour or less. And so everything is uh, got, his, got his eyes and got his attention. You know, I can hardly get him to even look at me. See if we can get a little curiosity going here and see if if I can start kind of drawing his mind here with me and be a little more important than these other horses around here because right now that's all he's wanting to really pay attention to is everything else. Oh boy, we'll see if we can just get a little contact here for a minute. Oh boy. And if he doesn't try really too hard to leave me I want to just stay here and just try to direct his attention here with me and get it off of this other horse behind me so I'll just kind of cover his eyes up a little bit and as he starts to you know, let go of everything else that he's looking at and pay a little more attention to me we'll get his head to relax right here oh boy so there's a a chunk of uh, brain matter in here called the reticular activating system and it's in charge of sight sound and touch with these horses and so right now that reticular activating system oh good they're slicking and chewing that's going to help that reticular activating system is uh you know it's in charge of listening and seeing everything around here and uh hearing everything and then also 
you know, my touch and being up there and touching on him. And so I want to get that reticular activating system really dialed in on me, which means he'll pay, you know, a little more attention to me than everything else out here. But I got I to gotta get his attention on me first here. We'll see if we can get him pulled off of this fence a little bit. There we go. So I want to keep as much of his attention, his eyes and ears on me here to start with to see if we can't start really building some connection because right now he'd a lot rather you know go hang out with all these other horses so you'll notice I do a lot of approach and retreat approach contact and retreat because each time he licks and chews after he gets a little bit tense there's a dopamine release that's going on in his brain and so and that dopamine release happens right before he licks and chews like just you know microseconds or just even seconds before that licking and chewing and that dopamine is a behavior reward a chemical in his mind that uh, will reward him for behavior and so when I can talk him into relaxing like hanging out with me right here and kind of paying attention to me you know if I can get him to lower his head a little bit and just kind of choose to hang out with me and then get my timing right and get a good release when he's kind of relaxing his mind I can get him to lick and chew and the more times he can lick and chew there we go like that right there the more dopamine that's going on board in his brain which is going to relax him more and more so the most important thing I'm trying to do with him right now is get him to lick and chew more than to get this halter on and so just kind of helping his mind out right here to get him to focus on me and to relax and then time my release to that behavior the dopamine will reward the behavior here we go if we can get it there we go he's licking and chewing already that dopamine will reward the behavior of relaxing and being calm you know with me there or kind of at my cue here you know I'm asking him to pay attention and to relax and focus right here with me so there he's alert right little bump of cortisol he's in the sympathetic nervous system and so if I can kind of help coach him down right now here we go and just ask his mind to relax a little more and just stay here with me and we'll get another dopamine release oh that's all right and uh, you know we want to get more of those dopamine releases to keep relaxing his mind a little bit more so I'm just trying to get his attention because he's not really you know even paying attention to me here so we're just gonna kind of bump him around a little bit and see what I can do to try to get his attention to come over here onto me there we go we'll let him get a little bit of that and then when I get his attention I want to release and there's my licking and chewing because that's going to set up more and more of him wanting to kind of look and have his behavior you have his attention be with me so I want to get that attention and then work to relax him more and more and uh, that's really going to soften up his mind and really get him in that optimal learning range where he can really relax and, and, and pay attention and learn some things. Oh boy. But right now I don't have his mind. Oh good, there's more licking and chewing. There's five times. See, so I don't have his mind. I'm not even keeping his attention. You know, he's not even giving me his attention. So we're just gonna keep kind of talking to him here. And when he turns and looks at me, I'll release and kind of let him know, hey, that's what I'm looking for. And we'll get him to lick and chew. Come over here, he's still not paying attention.
There he is. See, if he can't even pay attention long enough for me to come in there and, and even, you know, start to get my arm, my hands on him to catch him, you know, that's pretty dangerous to try to get in there with a horse that's, that's not relaxed or is not paying attention. Oh boy. So I got to get this attention here with me. Oh boy. Because if I can get his mind, well, the more I can get his mind relaxed in everything that I'm going to be doing with him, the more confident he's going to be in doing everything with me. And his learning curve is going to be so much faster. There's our licking and chewing again, number seven. So, I mean, I'm, I'm wanting more and more of this licking and chewing because that's going to relax his brain and get him in a neurochemistry of dopamine and serotonin. And when he's on more influenced by dopamine and serotonin, he can sure pay attention a lot better. Because right now, just the stress and worry is what's got him paying attention to everything else. Let's see if we can get his mind relaxed a little bit right here. Get our release just right. Get him to lick and chew again. And uh, just keep softening and softening his mind. And I'm going to start watching his ears because that's how he's going to be telling me kind of what's going on. I want to watch for these kind of laid back soft ears like this. To me that's when his, his mind is really kind of in neutral and he's just engaging with, with being okay with what's going on or just kind of in a thinking evaluating state. But I just got to keep his attention on task here on the project of what we're doing which is me right which is hanging out right here and not letting his his mind wander all over like that so I'm just gonna keep fixing him here every time until I can get and hold his attention there's licking and chewing oh just briefly and then see his attention left and then it got him distracted and so that that got him to to leave first he left mentally and then he left physically so i got to get him mentally to where he wants to stay and hang out with me before he'll physically be able to do it so now i want him to turn and look over here at me and see if i can't talk him into paying attention to me So I want to get his attention. Because if I can get his attention at liberty right here where I get him to where he wants to pay attention to me. There's more licking and chewing. Number, oh geez, I think eight. You know, when, I, when he wants to pay attention to me and wants to figure out what I've got going on because he keeps getting these these dopamine releases it won't be long here to where he's he's just going to be ready for me to set up all kinds of stuff for him because his brain's going to be in the right place his mind's going to be in a good learning range I love how he's lowering his head now when I release and uh, we'll just keep keep working this more and more so I got to learning about this science and how the brain works there's those ears I want to talk about um, from a, a neuroscientist by the name of Dr. Stephen Peters and uh, he's in Salt Lake City Utah in practice and so he's a human brain expert and he really loves horses and he really loves Mustangs and so that's how he and I kind of got together was was through the Mustang and uh, he started sharing his research on on uh, horse brains and how they work and how the chemicals change in there based on what's going on in their surroundings you know they'll be in either the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system 
Anyway, so he shared lots and lots of scientific information with me on on how these brains work. And so he was when he's taught me how this reticular activating system, how it's in charge of this sight, sound, and touch. And so right now, that reticular activating system has me, you know, somewhere less than number one in uh, in his mind. Right? I'm I'm less important than that little pony that's outside, and I'm less important than the squawking magpies that are over there. And so that's what I'm, I want to work myself up up the rank in his reticular activating system to where I'm I'm number one so I think I can put this halter on him now pretty easily and uh, and then that'll help me be able to kind of have and hold some more of his attention so we'll get that on and then uh, we can bring a flag in here and kind of check him out a little bit because I really don't know anything about him he seems just really quite mellow and a pretty good dude so i'm just going to help let this flag kind of help me uh do a few things here to kind of check him to see what he what's he mentally capable of right how fast can he recover or you know can he recover from from stimulus or something that gets him kind of wound up so right there I just triggered him way up into the sympathetic nervous system and here he's going to lick and chew you know he already did but I'm going to start asking for his attention a little more here 